FCEL stock. It's fuel cell energy. Um, it's on the NASDAQ. And this is a stock I just bought today because this chart looks pretty cool. I like the chart. And I'll go over what I think is happening in the market and why I like where this chart is and why I have a ridiculous target uh, up here. So let me go. Let's go look at the S&P real quick. And let me show you the general idea. So we have this this big cone from COVID, and what I'm calling for now is a another megaphone pattern, which would go something like this. And this is a topping pattern um, that's actually kind of common. And then we would go to the highs, which would be something ridiculous. And then you would go into a me me <laughs> mega crash here. Um, so I'm calling for a megaphone topping pattern on the whole S&P. Uh, but for this month, that means a biggish, you know, a big crossover of the megaphone right here. It should be pretty explosive um, if that happens. And I'm also totally open to the bearish scenario just being a lower high here. I know I see a lot of people drawing a trend line like this. And uh, that's a totally valid idea. And it's a spot where there's a lot of resistance anyway, so I'm definitely going to be paying attention to that. But again, I think that we're rallying to a high right now over the next couple of months. And, uh, and let me zoom in on this thing, I might, maybe even on the hourly. So yeah, the S&P, so our long-term green bull channel, you know, back from like the 2008 crash, has started getting less reactions now. And the blue levels are still getting some reactions, but um, the story of the last month or two has been all about the yellow cone and the red cone. And this bottoming pattern that I called here was into, you know, this downtrend. A lot of people spotted this downtrend, but I, I haven't seen anyone else at all set up a megaphone pattern in advance. Um, because who does that unless you're crazy? Uh, but that's the pattern that I think we're in right now. So I called this crossover of the green channel. And uh, I called this bottom. So I've been doing pretty well so far uh, on this top. But I don't think this is the top of the whole market. And I don't think that we are in a bear market yet. Like I think I'll show, um, I'll show the euro dollar futures and explain some stuff. Fuel cell has a lot to do with natural gas, and so I need to talk about Russia, I think, and I need to talk about euro dollar futures and explain inflation and interest rates, um, and why I think why I think that we're going to get a rally, and I think it looks like NASDAQ is going to be leading the rally again. And so, I mean, if you just look at the S&P, though, you can see like all the big moves recently have been yellow to the red cone, you know, and then it's like, break it, right, yellow, red, yellow, break the red, jump on top of the red. So this move today when we jumped on top of the red was a huge entry. I'm like, okay, I don't think we're going to be able to break down through this thing again. I think we're stuck on top of this, and we could take off at any moment. So I'm not buying, like, uh, you know, weekly call options or something. <clears throat> I might, well, I may do that on GameStop tomorrow if it comes down. There's GameStop earnings that come out in a couple of hours. I'll do a GameStop video also. But, um, yeah, anyway, this is about fuel cell. Uh, just because I think that's one of the more interesting small stocks in the NASDAQ that fits all the criteria of what I think should run right now. And it may be one of the leading stocks in this rally. Uh, but in any case, you can just see the reactions here. And if you go on to like an hourly chart, if it fits, I think it'll fit. Um, it's even more clear. I mean, just rallying into the yellow line, right, and throwing a dart up. And then on the way down, you top check the, I mean, it's just pretty obvious. We're testing the yellow line, red line, you know, break it, hit it, test yellow, red, yellow, red, right, break it, test it from the top. So that's the story right now is just a super volatile, like, jumps in between these lines. 
But I think that we're clear now. I think that we're out of here. I don't think we're going to come down and test like the yellow line again now. I think we're out. Um, and this rally today also looked fake to me. I mean, not the rally, the pull down started looking fake today. If you go to the NAS, um, you can see the see where the NAS did the sort of the breakout on top. The NAS went stronger than the S&P on the way up here. And then this pull down wasn't uh, reflected on the NAS. The pull down on the S&P came all the way down to where we broke through, you know. And the NAS was not chasing that move. So I'm like, oh, okay. The NAS is starting to look strong and it's not following this move down. So I think this move down is fake. And the IWM, if you look at it, uh, came down okay, but it rallied hard. And the IWM has looked like it wants to sort of lead as well. So it looks like the, the NASDAQ, which is, you know, the tech and growth stocks, wants to run. And it looks like the IWM wants to run. And that's small caps, and it's an indication of margin loan coming back into the market. So I think that it's looking strong. Let me do like a weekly chart, I guess, on Euro dollar futures real quick. And then I go back to the fuel cell chart and show you what's going on. But this this is uh, what basically determines interest rates for the last 40 years or something. Um, the Fed, you know, the Fed is like, oh, we're going to keep raising rates, blah, 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 blah. And people are like, they didn't raise rates fast enough. And now, blah, you know, it's just a bunch of talk. And it's a bunch of BS, like all of it. Because this chart determines where the interest rates are, like where they're going. The Fed doesn't do much of anything except announce where this chart is. They guess where it's going to go, and then they announce where it is. And they are usually pretty good at guessing. And so they, you know, it's like just quarterly or whatever, they'll just do an announcement. Uh, but sometimes they get surprised, and there's like, oh, no, we have to do an emergency rate, rate, you know, cut or something. It's like, you don't have to do emergency anything. Like, it just went... A, the other direction and you were wrong on your guess and so just announce the freaking interest rate and like let's move on but this is what this is the the 2008 crash and this zero is around zero interest rates and when we come this way those interest rates are going up and they didn't come up very high you know this was the peak um, in I guess yeah it took a while to even come up because we, we stuck around zero for a long time until like 2015, 2016. And then this is as far as it could make it up. And then we went right back down to zero, right? And now we've crossed over. And see what the Fed was calling for is a series of hikes. They thought maybe three hikes in a row. So, I mean, what the Fed has been calling for for the last several months is a breakout here. And that would be inflationary. That means we're breaking out of this long-term downtrend and we're going into inflation. Let's see what we just got the last week or so, or the last month, is we got totally rejected inside of this pattern, and now we're going sideways and even up, which looks like we're bottoming again on this chart, which means interest rates are topping out, which means inflation is topping out, which means usually what happens, like if we're going sort of sideways on this chart, the stock market will bull, and this rip here was the COVID crash. And so the market does not like uh, that move. So I think that's just this chart. You know, I think we might get a couple of months of sideways stuff here, and then we might rip back to zero or near zero interest rates. And so the Fed's now talking, like the last week, they're like, oh, we might, you know, hold off on rate hikes or... Um, we have some other, you know, inflation fighting tactics, talking about natural gas and stuff like this. Um, yeah, but all of that is a bunch of jabber because it's just the bond market uh, trading. And right now, interest rates look like they are topping out or just, yeah, I mean, they look like the interest rates are topping out. And most likely we go back to zero, and when we're making a big move like this, that could be another crash similar to COVID. So like that's what I'm calling for right now is a bull rally, and it looks like it's being led by the NASDAQ, which is not what I was thinking was going to happen, um, but that's what I think is happening now. And I think going back down to here is going to be another crash, 
And then once we go sideways here, that's an even bigger spot to rally because we're at like zero interest rates. But yeah, in general, uh, the stock market likes it when this thing trades sideways and does not like it when it goes vertical. Um, anyway, that's interest rates and the Fed talking about a bunch of crap. And where, like, you don't have to listen to the Fed's guess on where they think interest rates are going. Who cares what they think? Like, they're just expecting it to break out, and it didn't. And now they're like, oh, now it looks like it's going sideways. And like, okay, I agree with that. It probably is going sideways for now. And then what? Are we going to break out? Or are we going back to zero? Um, but in any case, blah, Fed. But yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think is happening is we're going to go sideways, and it looks like we go back to friggin' zero. And it's going to be like a deflationary story that actually starts happening. And I've been saying this for months and months and months that like the inflation story may be correct. Um, but it's not going to be a real thing until we break out of this. And we're not breaking out of it now. So I still am not buying the inflation story at all. I was not buying it. I'm still not buying it. I think we're actually going deflationary move back to almost zero interest rates. That's what's going to be happening over the next year or two. Uh, yeah, right. But I was trying to talk about fuel cell, right? So fuel cell does natural gas. Uh, it's a hydrogen fuel cell company. But what they do is they build fuel stations that, um, that use natural gas to make hydrogen and make heat. And then they're quiet, you know, they're quiet, small uh, power stations that you can have inside of city city center areas they're cool power stations and they're efficient and they work off natural gas and what oh, I'm still on the weekly chart so I mean you can see this company's been around since the 90s it's been trading in the 200 something dollar range it went all the way down to 15 cents like almost out of business but this is still a functioning company and I just wanted to go into the chart and talk about you know, like the Fed has been saying, or the president has been saying, that we're going to stop raising interest rates now. And now they're talking about, like, well, we need to punish Putin, but we kind of need their natural gas because there's a major shortage. Um, so I'm thinking they're going to, like, talk about punishing Putin, but they're just going to actually be letting him sell natural gas, and I expect this war probably winds down soon. Looks like some border shifts are going to happen, like looks like uh, Finland and like uh, Sweden are going to join NATO and Ukraine is not going to join NATO which was the big point in this whole war for Russia was like Russia did not want NATO taking control of Ukraine and taking control of all the natural gas and the pipelines there. Um, and so I think Russia is probably going to be able to defend some of the natural gas resources and the pipelines and still be able to use them. I think that's what's going to actually happen. I think this war will be over soon. But, um, yeah, anyway, the uh, NATO forces just shipped in, like, long-range missiles into Ukraine, which is one thing that Putin is like, you better not fire long-range missiles at Russia or else we have massive nuclear counterattacks set up. That is not going to be a good move. And so, you know, NATO's like, well, we're just putting long-range missiles here for defensive purposes, even though that makes no sense. But we're not going to shoot them at Russia. It's just like, okay. Anyway, I do think the natural gas supply is probably going to increase soon. And that's probably good for this stock. That was the whole story was I just wanted to say that I think the natural gas whole scenario that's going to happen soon is probably beneficial for this stock um, in the medium to long term and that doesn't have a whole lot with this technical move that I'm looking at right now but I do think this is a, a actually a good company and um, not that that matters this is more of like a meme stock trade that has high short interest it's like a short squeeze meme, meme stock trade but it's in the NASDAQ and, and it is actually a, a good company that should have fundamentals coming in helping it. Um, although most of these stocks with short interest uh, miss earnings all the time. And this earnings call is not coming up too soon. But uh, but yeah, anyway, I guess if you draw the, the megaphone idea on this chart, 
it looks something like this. And so, uh, that's what my call is here. Not financial advice as always, just like what I'm looking at trading. And just a ton of things lined up on this chart where I think it's a really cool entry. Um, and it's one that I wasn't looking at before and I just noticed the chart a couple of times. I'm like, oh, this chart looks really good. Because um, it has this mega double bottom and a bullish run. And it did blow off in February last year with a lot of the meme the meme stocks, and it made a lower high, which I'm not sure if that is technically super awesome, but what it just did is it picked up double support. There's a horizontal support that's really strong here, and it just picked up right on top of the super uphill W pattern. So you can see this uphill W. This is a super, super bullish pattern. And look what we did here. You, you do the uphill W, right? You coil, stab again. You rip, right? And then you pull back right to the top of that uphill W. And this is a big version of it. And I'm going to show you the small version of it. We just did it today. And that's why I just bought it today. Um, and as I was showing you on the S&P and the NASDAQ, I think this down move is over. I think it just failed today. And this is why it failed, because look at this, it's the exact same thing. You get the stab, right? You get the uphill W, the coil. Then you rip and you pull back just right to the top of the coil. Boom. Spot on. And this is what's happened across a ton of charts. I think there's like 30 different charts that did this pattern today. While the S&P was trying to crash harder than the NASDAQ and it all froze. We'll go back and look at the SP in a second, but this usually results in a big move to the upside. Um, if this is in fact a bullish, you know, uphill W, which this is one of the most bullish patterns there is. I don't know. It's like an 80% to the upside pattern, especially off mega double support. It's triple support because we have the bullish channel and we jumped off the bear channel and we have the sideways support that we jumped off of. So it's a ton of support, and it's a super bullish technical structure. So I just like this stock, and um, I bought calls on this thing, and it was like October. I think I got October at like $5 strikes. This is what I like to do with calls is buy extra time, like three, three times the amount of time I'm looking at for the trade, and then I like to strike underneath the support line. I don't like to go out of the money up here somewhere. Because if it just bulls boringly, I want to still win. If you go out of the money, then you're like, you better do a crazy move. But um, this is still slightly out of the money, but not by much. <clears throat> um, in any case, that is my thesis on fuel cell energy uh, on the technicals and the long-term trading. And also, if you go look back at this thing, I mean, it has a, a history of being around... 200 something dollars like who knows like the these hydrogen fuel cells that run off natural gas may uh, may rally like that whole sector may be good if we just get natural gas supply and these fuel cells they sell them all over Europe and the US and they can put them all in inner city areas and stuff like that but um, yeah I think that there's like an extra upside possibility just since it's traded forever around 300 somewhere the possibility it could get back up there i'm not saying like this week but um, i do think that the chart just the history price is good and then i think workhorse is not a similar sector but it's a similar setup where it's picking up multiple supports and it's breaking out of a downtrend and it's doing an uphill w so I think, uh, and it's also NASDAQ. So this is a similar a similar kind of uh, trading idea. It's sort of long NASDAQ, but it's a small stock that can get more volatile, can have bigger upside. Um, yeah, and uh, as far as char other charts that I've, I've done, sort of the uphill W thing, at the same time in different sectors, um, TCAT did... A similar like breakout of a downtrend onto support and it did the uphill W pattern. I don't know my lines aren't coming in on this thing. What's going on here? Okay, that's okay. 
Um, and then Sins, Sinsionix. This one, what did I lose my, I think I lost my internet. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Uh, sort of did it, it like, it start, it's, the W didn't really do the rolling stab move. It did like the, the coil, but this one hasn't broken out of a downtrend yet. Um, so this is a cool stock for trading volatility, but it hasn't broken out of the downtrend. Whereas like TCAT broke out of a downtrend, so did Fuel Cell, so did Workhorse. Um, so did GameStop. I'll look at GameStop uh, in the next video, but they have earnings coming in tonight. And I did pick up one call option on GameStop just because I think the market wants to rally right now, but I, I'm hoping that GameStop pulls down to its coil. That's where I want to buy GameStop at, almost a uh, 100 or 10 something, 105 maybe. Um, so if, you know, GameStop usually fails on earnings, it has high short interest again, it's almost 30% or something like that. So the whole meme stock trade, and this is uh, not on the NASDAQ, it's in the Russell 2000 small caps, which are running. That's the other sector that's running. Um, but uh, it looks like meme stocks and, and tech are going to run again, which are that's not supposed to happen, but it looks like it is happening. So we'll see if that all happens and if GameStop, you know, fails. Earnings usually don't affect the trades that much, but like the next day on negative earnings will usually pull down. Like you can see you're in the middle of a run to the upside here. And it posted negative earnings and it just pulled down for one day and ripped right back up. So like that's, here's like a couple of days of a downtrend, but it was already in a downtrend. So, you know, like earnings misses, like, yeah, this just kind of pulled down when it wasn't necessarily in the middle of that pattern. Um, so in any case, a day, tomorrow maybe a day to get a GameStop trade. And I'll be watching that tomorrow, and I'll be doing a video when these earnings come out. But, yeah, these are the kind of stocks I'm looking at. Tesla, you know, is the huge NASDAQ, crazy, volatile, original meme stock. But it's also it's also doing the general stock market pattern descending wedge into the megaphone pattern. And where is the megaphone on Tesla? It's over a 1,000. And then, I don't know, the crash would be back down at like 500 or something if it flipped over and came down here. Um, but yeah, like I have an upside target on Tesla to potentially go to 17 or something. Um, although the, there's some tough zones on Tesla to get through here. And it didn't really follow the bottoming pattern that I was looking at on other charts. I don't like this bottoming pattern on Tesla, but it really does look like it's following the pattern. So uh, that one's interesting. Tesla's another interesting one that looks like it'll run. If it's following these trends that look like they're working. AMC tends to follow GameStop. Um, and I don't have as many technicals on this, but it did an uphill W and right pulled down today right to it. So this is another kind of setup. And who knows where that runs? 12 some. Yeah, AMC could be a, a pretty cool like meme stock trade again. Uh, there's a bunch of similar kind of things to Tesla and stuff. In here, and I don't have a lot of energy stocks that are similar to fuel cell. This is a pretty unique, uh, unique stock and a unique chart that uh, it's a little different than most of the meme stocks because it also kind of makes sense. And it's also an energy stock, and energy stocks tend to bull at the end of credit cycles. So I like it for that reason as well. Like, I like. I like an energy stock that could bull well at the end of a credit cycle that has a high overhead price from a long time ago and it's also following the money flow patterns so yeah this is cool yeah if we get like a megaphone thing we'll have to see where it goes but I mean we could get something like this and then it could run like up freaking up here or something like it could go nuts like imagine that if we roll over in a megaphone pattern it could go from like 2 to 250, 250 to 250 um, next year, you know. But I'll definitely be watching this stock now and see uh, see how it reacts to the the money flows and see if we get actually get a bull run here because that's not guaranteed. This is just one trading setup that I like, but if this thing f 
fails or something, then uh, I'll be changing my whole <laughs> my whole idea. But I have a whole topping pattern and a whole thesis right now on money flows and deflation and what sectors are going to lead. That's different than almost everyone else I've seen. So um, at the least, this is a cool thing to pay attention to. And I think I'm being contrarian right now. Like everyone is super, super bearish right now. But uh, but I think that's the end of this down move. And I think we just go into like a megaphone, which is, I mean, highly volatile, but that's a pretty normal pattern. So early call on all of that. And this run, yeah, maybe NASDAQ. I don't know if we do another megaphone pattern. Like it's just so huge. It's crazy. But that's what happens at the end of a giant bubble. So, yeah, anyway, uh, please hit the like button for me and uh, check this stock out and let me know what you think. And happy trading.